In chapter three, section four, we are looking at slope and rate of change. Our objectives are to find the slope of a line given two points of the line, find the slope of a line given its equation, find the slopes of horizontal and vertical lines, compare the slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines, and interpret slope as a rate of change. We want to find the slope of the line that passes through the given points. We are going to use the slope formula. Recall the slope formula. Slope m of the line containing the points x1, y1, and x2, y2 is given by m, which is equal rise over run, equals the change in y over the change in x, which is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Now x1 and x2 cannot be equal. If that happens, you would end up dividing by zero. Let's use the formula to find the slope for part A. We know that the slope formula is y2 minus y1. We can label these x1, x, sorry, y1 is your first point, and x2, y2, those are subscripts. So the slope is y2, 7, minus y1, 5, divided by x sub 2, which is 1, minus x sub 1, which is 6. When you simplify the numerator, you get 2, and the denominator, you get negative 5. Now it's standard to write our slope as a fraction, negative 2 over 5, with a negative either out in front or with the numerator. Now this formula can be reversed, but as long as you reverse both the x1, y1, x2, y2. And let's see what happens when, when we do that. We could have also used um, this as your x sub 2 and y sub 2, and this is your x sub 1 and y sub 1. And we'll see when it simplifies, we end up with the same value. So if we do that, we get y sub 2, which is 5, minus y sub 1, 7, divided by x sub 2, which is 6, minus x sub 1, 1. And when we simplify this, we get negative 2 over 5. You can see that we get the same slope. So the order doesn't matter as long as you're consistent that the first point and the second point. Now in part B, we're given the graph. So we've got to identify the points. So let's look at the locations of those and write the coordinates. We have a point here where x is negative 1 and y is 3 negative 1 in the x direction, 3 in the y direction, and we have another point here which is 3 in the x direction and negative 2 in the y direction. So we're going to use that slope formula and we can find that y equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. You want to simplify the entire numerator first negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, and the entire denominator, 3 minus negative 1, is 4. So for the answer for part B, the slope is negative 5 over 4. And let's look at part C. Using the slope formula, we can use y2 minus y1, y2 minus y1, divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Let's simplify the entire numerator to get negative 3, and this minus negative in the denominator will give us 5. So the slope for part C is negative 3 fifths. In the next set of problems, we are finding the slope of each line. We can do that as long as the equation of the line, we can identify that slope as long as it's written in slope-intercept form. So when a linear equation in two variables is written in slope-intercept form, which is in the form of y equals mx plus b. m is the slope. The coefficient of the x term is the slope, and 0 comma b is the y-intercept. Let's begin by finding the slope of the first one by first solving the equation for y. We can do that by subtracting x from both sides of the equation. Our goal here is to get the y by itself and to write it in the slope-intercept form. When you do that, you get y equals 12 minus x, but rather than write it as 12 minus x, we're going to write it as negative x plus 12. So the coefficient of the x term 
is your slope. Notice we have that negative one in front. So the slope is negative one, or you can even write it as negative one over one. Let's do the same thing for the second equation. The goal here is to get it into the form of y equals mx plus b, which is the slope intercept form. We do that by subtracting 3x from both sides of the equation. So they would get the y by itself, and we have 8 minus 3x, but we write it as negative 3x plus 8. And then the coefficient here, we can see that the slope of the line is negative 3, or we can write it as a fraction negative 3 over 1. Let's do this, continue with the next one. 11x minus 3y equals 33. Here we need to subtract 11x. It's going to take a couple more steps here. Subtract 11x from both sides so that we get negative 3y on the left side of the equation equals negative 11x plus 33. We need to do another step here. Divide by negative 3. We want to get the y all by itself, and we've got to divide by negative 3. And we divide both sides of the entire equation by negative 3. When we simplify, we get y equals, we're dividing both of these terms by negative 3 on the right side, so the negative 11x divided by negative 3, we can write as a negative 11 over 3x, and then the plus 33 divided by a negative 3, we can write it as 33 divided by negative 3. We can simplify this as this negative divided by negative, we can write it as a positive, 11 over 3x, and this plus a 33 divided by negative 3, we can write that as a minus 3. Oops, a minus 11. So the slope of this line is, again, the coefficient of the x term. The slope of the line is 11 over 3. For part D, we have 9x plus y equals negative 12. Again, we want to get the y by itself. We're going to begin by subtracting 9x from both sides of the equation. Simplifying, we get y equals negative 9x minus 12. That coefficient of the x term is our slope. So we can say the slope of that line is negative 9, or we can write it as negative 9 over 1. We want to find the slope of each line. But these equations are a little bit different than the previous examples. The first equation only has a y in it, and the second equation only has an x in it. So we know that these are special types of lines. And if you remember the h, o, y, v, u, x from the previous videos, this will help you recognize the slope of each one of these lines. The first line only has a y in it. So this is a horizontal line. And horizontal lines have zero slope. The slope is zero, and their equations can be written as y equals a constant. So the slope of this line is equal to zero. And if you were to sketch that, it would be a nice horizontal line that goes through negative five on the y-axis. If you wanted to write it in terms of y equals mx plus b, you could subtract 5 from both sides of this equation to get y equals negative 5, or you could even write it as y equals 0x minus 5. So again, the coefficient of the x term is your slope when it's in the form of slope intercept y equals mx plus b. For part b, notice the equation only has an x in it, so that means it's a vertical line and the slope is undefined, and the equation is only has an x in it. It can be written as x equals a constant. So this can be a vertical line when you graph it. The slope is undefined. We want to determine whether each pair of lines is parallel, perpendicular, or neither. To do that, let's write each of these equations in slope-intercept form so we can identify the slope of the first and the second line and compare. If the lines are parallel, then they will have equal slopes. If the lines are perpendicular, then the slopes will be the opposite reciprocal. If the slopes are different um, and they're not opposite reciprocals, then those lines are neither parallel or perpendicular. 
Let's write the first equation and solve for y. We have 3x equals 2y plus 3. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides and just kind of flip the whole thing around and write it as 2y equals 3x minus 3. And then I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides to get y equals 3 over 2x minus 3 over 2. So the slope of this line is 3 over 2. Let's write the second equation, solving that for y, to get, again, we're starting off with 2x plus 3y equals 2. We're going to subtract 2x from both sides, and we get 3y equals negative 2x plus 2. Divide by 3 on both sides and rewrite the second equation as y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 2 thirds. Now we look at the slope of the second line. We see the slope of the first line. We can say m. The first line has a slope of 3 over 2. The second line has a slope of negative 2 over 3. These are opposite reciprocals, so these lines are perpendicular. We're going to repeat this process with the second set of equations. We begin with the first equation, x plus 3y equals 4, by subtracting x from both sides. We get 3y equals negative x plus 4. Divide both sides by 3 to get y equals negative 1 third x plus 4 thirds. The slope of that line is negative 1 third. The second equation, 8x plus 2y equals 2. I'm subtracting 8x from both sides to get 2y equals negative 8x plus 2, and then dividing both sides by 2 to get y equals negative 8 over 2, which can be reduced to negative 4x plus 2 over 2, which is 1. And the slope of this line is negative 4. So the slope of the first line was negative 1 third. The slope of the second line is negative 4. If they were the same, the lines would be parallel. If they were opposite reciprocals, they would be perpendicular. We see that is not the case, so this is neither. These lines are not parallel. These lines are not perpendicular. Our last set of equations, let's rewrite this. We have 9x. I'm going to write the this as 16 minus 3y equals 9x, because I want to get the y by itself. I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides, and that will give me negative 3y equals 9x minus 16. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3, and I, the result is y equals 9 divided by negative 3, which is negative 3x, minus 16 divided by negative 3, or 16 over 3. So the slope of this line is negative 3. The second line, 16 minus 4y equals 12x. I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides, and I get negative 4y is equal to 12x minus 16, dividing both sides by negative 4, and simplify, you get y equals 12 divided by negative 4, which is negative 3x, minus 16 over negative 4 becomes a positive 4. So the slope of this line is negative 3. Let's compare those two slopes. The slope of the first line is negative 3. The slope of the second line is negative 3. These are the same, so these lines are parallel. Find the slope of a line that is parallel and perpendicular to the line passing through each pair of points. Here we need to use the slope formula. The slope formula is y2 minus y1 equals um, divided by x2 minus x1. When we plug in the given points, know that we have, this is our x1, y1, x2, and y2. By plugging those in, we get y2 is negative 1 
minus y1 of negative 5 divided by x2, which is negative 1, minus x sub 1, which is negative 5. We can simplify these. The minus the negative beca becomes a positive, so we get a 4 in the numerator and a 4 in the denominator. So the slope of this line that connects those two points, that goes through those two points, is equal to 4 over 4 or 1. So if we were trying to find a slope of a line that's parallel to that line, that slope would also be 1. The slope of the line that would be perpendicular would have to be the opposite reciprocal. Now n can be written as 1 over 1. So the reciprocal of 1 over 1 is also 1, but it's the opposite. So if this line had a positive slope, the perpendicular line would have to have a negative slope. So the perpendicular slope would be negative 1. Let's look at letter E. We have the two points. We're going to use the slope formula. y2 minus y1 in the numerator, negative 4 minus 10, divided by 5 minus a negative 2. By simplifying the numerator, we get negative 14, and the denominator, we get 7. We know that negative 14 divided by 7 is negative 2. So the perpendicular slope, let's use the symbol for that, perpendicular, I'm sorry, parallel slope. We can draw two parallel lines, that's the abbreviation for parallel. The parallel slope would be the same slope, negative 2. The perpendicular line, it's an upside down T, that's our shortcut notation for perpendicular, that slope would be the opposite reciprocal. Now think of negative 2 as negative 2 divided by 1. So the reciprocal, we're inverting the numerator and the denominator to get the slope of with a 1 in the numerator, that negative 2 in the denominator, but it's the opposite. The parallel slope is negative, so the perpendicular slope would have to be positive. So it's the opposite of negative 1 half, and that would be positive 1 half. An inclined ramp leading to a warehouse is to rise 16 inches for each horizontal distance of 17 feet. Write this slope as a grade. Grade is just another way of saying slope. The grade is the rise over the run. And for this problem, the rise is 16 inches and the horizontal distance is the run, which is 17 feet. In order to write this as a percent, we do need to make sure that the units are the same. We need to convert um, 17 feet to the equal number of inches. Since we know there are 12 inches in a foot, we can write this as 16 inches over 17 times 12, or 204 inches. We can reduce this fraction, 16 over 24, because these are both divisible by 4. This would be the same thing as 16 divided by 4 over 204 divided by 4, and that would give us 4 over 51. 4 inches over 51 inches. This ramp for every four inches of rise, there is 51 inches of run. And you can also express that as a percent. Take four divided by 51 and convert that decimal to a fraction and you can write this as 7.8%.